Hey everyone, I'm Scott Milburn, Master Trainer at Aquatherm. Today we're going to be giving you guys an overview of, of the electrofusion process. So first, let's talk about the tools that we're going to use. For electrofusion, we're going to have a specific electrofusion machine that's going to be able to connect to our fitting and provide the, provide the, the current in the embedded copper coil to heat the fitting and the pipe. Remember, with your fitting specifically, don't remove it from the bag until you're ready to actually begin the process. This will help, it keep, help keep it clean and contaminant free for the fusion process. You're also going to need an appropriate scraper. There's lots of different scraping options. For example, there's scrapers like this, which are a drill mounted scraper. In fact, they also contain a tool on them to face the pipe. Uh, so you have facing and scraping combo tools like these. There's other tools for larger diameter pipes, for example, that can mount to the wall of the pipe and they'll rotate around the pipe as they scrape it. Or there's other scraping tools that can clamp on the inside diameter of a pipe, and they can, and, but they, they work essentially the same way. They have a scraping arm that will rotate around the pipe and it'll scrape the pipe to prep it for the electrofusion process. Just make sure you consult your, your local tool rep to figure out what scraping tools are going to, are going to be the most efficient for you and your specific, and your specific application. <clears throat> so when we're doing the electrofusion process, the first thing that we need to do is cut the pipe. For electrofusion, it's especially important to cut the pipe squarely. This is because when we bring the two pieces together inside the fitting, we want to minimize the gap between the two pipe ends. Remember, it's the outside surface of the pipe that's getting fused to the coupling. It's not the ends of the pipe that are being fused together. So getting square cuts and minimizing that gap will, will contribute to a good fusion in the end. Once we get our cuts, and we get the pipe cut to the correct length, now we need to scrape it. So I'm going to be using a combination facing and scraping tool today that'll mount to a drill. And we're going to go ahead and first, I'm going to face the pipe to make sure that the end is perfectly square. Let me put, it, let me put this here in the drill. I'm going to insert it onto the end of the pipe. And then I'm going to engage the drill slowly. And I'm going to face the end of the pipe. Okay. I'm also going to face the other side while this tool is set up in a facing mode. Okay, now we're going to scrape. Each scraping tool is going to have slightly different operation, so just make sure you consult the specific tool manual for the operation of your scraping tool. So now I'm going to insert this onto the end of the pipe and I'm going to do and I'm going to get my even scrape across the surface. It's important to remember that whatever scraping tool you're using, make sure that you scrape the full, make sure that the scraper for one scrapes the entire distance all the way to the end of the pipe. It's easy to miss the lip of the pipe here and then that maintains the original diameter of the pipe. And if that happens, it makes it very difficult to fit, to put the fitting on and fit it to the pipe. So make sure you scrape all the way past the end of the pipe. And the other piece is, make sure that you scrape at least half the length of the fitting that you're going to be installing. Now, sometimes you'll have to scrape further than that. For example, if you're going to be using this fitting as a slip coupling, which, it can, which can be done, what that will mean, what that means is that you have to scrape 
the full length of the fitting so that it can actually fit back on the pipe. See, if I get past the scraped area, I start hitting some resistance and I can't actually slide the, I can't slide this coupling all the way over the pipe to use it as a slip coupling. So make sure that if you need to use it as a slip coupling, you get an appropriate scraping tool that can scrape the correct distance to allow you to use it that way. So I fit it, so now, now that I've scraped the pipe, I'm gonna fit this on here and I'm gonna check how well that fits on there. I should feel a little bit of resistance when I insert this fitting onto the pipe, but not so much that I would have to use a hammer or a mallet or some other tool to help me get this fitting onto the pipe. Okay, so you should feel a little bit of interference between the inside surface of the coupling and the outside surface of the pipe. And, it should, and, and aside from that, it shouldn't fit excessively loose. So you should encounter some resistance putting on the pipe, but it shouldn't be so much that you need a tool to help you get it on. If there's too much resistance there and you can't fit the coupling all the way on, you'll need to take multiple scrapes. Okay, so at a minimum, we need to scrape the pipe at least once, but, so, but depending on the tolerance of our fitting and the tolerance on the outside diameter of the pipe, multiple passes may be necessary to get the correct fit between the coupling and the pipe. So now that I've got this one scraped properly, I'm gonna go ahead and scrape the other, the other side. Once again, I'm gonna check the fit of the coupling on the pipe. I'm meeting just a little bit of resistance, but it's not fitting too loose, and I don't need an extra tool. I don't need a mallet or a hammer to help get this on. So I'd say that fit is good. So now that both, now that both pieces have been scraped, let's go ahead and clean them, clean the pipe and the fitting with isopropyl alcohol. So I'm gonna clean that scraped area. And I'm also going to clean the inside of the fitting just for good measure. So the next step of this electrofusion process is we need to mark half the length of the fitting, what we, what we would call our stab depth. We need to mark that stab depth on the pipe here. This doesn't have to be very exact. We're just trying to get reference marks that, that will let us know that when we insert the two pieces of pipe into the fitting, that they're meeting right at the halfway point of the fitting. So I'm just gonna hold this, <clears throat> I'm just gonna hold this fitting close to these pipes, and I'm gonna make a general mark. Okay. Like I said, it doesn't have to be super exact. You just need to get it close enough so that when you insert these two pieces in here, you make them meet, you insert them in until you encounter resistance, and then you're gonna center that fitting on your marks. So you can see here where I made those marks, the arrows on those are meeting right at the fitting, and so I know that my fitting is centered on the two pieces of pipe. So now I'm going to go ahead, so now that I've got it marked and cleaned, I'm going to go ahead and place the pipe and the fitting in an alignment jig. When you're doing electrofusion, it's very important to use these alignment jigs because as the, two, as the components heat up, you need the support of the alignment jig to hold them 
in proper alignment and hold them I isolated and still while that material heats up and then cools down and fuses. If you don't hold it in an alignment jig, it's possible for the pipe to shift or the fitting to shift during the fusion process and that could disrupt some of the new bonds that are forming. So we'll get this placed and tightened in here so that now it can't move. <clears throat> Next, we need to get our electrofusion leads and connect them to our fitting. So we bring this over here. I need a little bit more slack. So collect, connect the leads to the fitting. Typically, the polarity of these leads doesn't matter. For the, for the aquatherm fitting, it's, sim, it's a simple coil on the inside, so it's not important which, side, which lead connects to which side, but make sure you consult your tool manual to be, to, to be sure that polarity isn't an issue when you're hooking up the leads to the electrofusion fitting. Once these are connected, <coughs> we're gonna go ahead and scan the barcode here on the fitting and we should see the parameters pop up on the machine over here. Verify on your machine that the parameters match what's on the sticker. So on this one, for example, it says 40 volts is our input voltage and we're gonna be heating up the fitting for 105 seconds. And I see that that matches what's on the machine. It gives the correct size here, 63 millimeter pipe, 63 millimeter pipe, and then it lists the 10 minute cool down. So make sure that, that bar, those barcode parameters that are on the fitting, match what's on the machine. Once you've verified that the parameters match, you can go ahead and proceed with the process on your electrofusion machine. So I'm gonna click enter. Now the machine's typically gonna confirm, did you scrape the pipe? And did you, align, did you place the pipe in an alignment jig? And we did both of those steps. So I'm gonna press enter again to start the process. So at this point, you'll see a countdown start on your electrofusion machine. So right now, it's passing current through that coil. It's beginning to heat it up. That's gonna heat up the, the fitting material and the pipe material. It's gonna generate a melt zone. And then, they're, and then once the heat up finishes, they'll be able to cool and fuse together. All right, so once the heat up is finished, the machine is automatically gonna pass into a cool down mode. So right now, there's no more electricity flowing to that, to that fitting. So we can go ahead and disconnect. We can go ahead and disconnect our leads if we want to. You can leave them on for the duration of the cool down, or you can disconnect them and move to the next fitting if you need to. What's important though, is that we need to leave this, the fitting and the pipe in the alignment jig for the full cool down of this, uh, that corresponds to this size. So now that this electrofusion coupling is in a cool down stage, we can start doing some, a uh, little bit of inspection. So one thing that's different about the electrofusion process is that there are no beads that form to indicate if the fusion was done correctly or not. With socket fusion, fusion outlets, and, and, uh, and butt fusion, we can use the beads to help us evaluate it. We don't, have, we don't have that feature here with electrofusion couplings. So one thing that you're gonna look for is the fusion indicator here. So if we take a look at a new fitting here, this fusion indicator has this little black cylinder and you can see right now it's raised above the red cylinder. On a fused fitting, like we can see here, that black cylinder will retract inside that red cylinder once it's fused. So that's a fusion indicator to show us that someone placed leads on this fitting and they, they went through the fusion process to put it together. What this fusion indicator doesn't tell us is if that, fu is if that fusion was, was, was successful or not. Since we don't have any beads to judge this off of, the only way that we can judge if or rather, the only way that we can determine if an electrofusion was done correctly is through a pressure test. So make sure that whenever you do electrofusion joints, you always do a pressure test to make sure that that fusion was successful.
Now that we've completed an electrofusion joint, let's review the process. Remember first, we're going to cut the pipe and we gotta make sure to cut it exactly square to minimize the gap between the two pieces in the middle. Next, we're going to scrape the pipe. Remember, we have to scrape both sides at least once, but sometimes multiple passes may be necessary to achieve the correct fit between the fitting and the pipe. Once we've completed the appropriate amount of scraping, we're going to clean the pipe with isopropyl alcohol and we're gonna clean the fitting. Once we've cleaned all the components, we're gonna mark the stab depth on both of the ends of pipe. After we've marked the stab depth, we put them together inside the electrofusion coupling and we're gonna place the whole assembly into an alignment jig and we're gonna make sure that the two pieces of pipe have been inserted properly up to their stab depths and that the whole assembly is fixed in place in this alignment jig. Once we've placed the pipe and fitting into the alignment jig and, got the, and, and have them fixed in place, now you can go ahead and attach the, the leads from the electrofusion machine to the coupling. Once the leads are attached, you'll scan the barcode, verify that the parameters on the fitting match what's on the machine, and then you can go ahead and proceed with the fusion process. So confirm that you've scraped and aligned the pipe, start the heat up process, and then allow the machine to, to complete the full heat up. Remember that during the heat up process, we don't want to take the pipe out of the, out of the alignment jig. And then once we reach the cool down, same as the heat up, we do not want to disturb or take these pieces out of that alignment jig until we have reached the full cool down time for this size of pipe. Once we reach that cool down, we're going to do a quick inspection. One thing to remember is that there's no beads that form during the electrofusion process. So the only indicator that you'll have is this fusion indicator that will tell you if someone heated up the fitting and, it, and, and did a fusion here. But remember, the only way to verify if the fusion was successful is through a pressure test. I hope this overview of the electrofusion process was helpful. Thanks for taking the time to watch. If you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to your local Aquatherm representative.